What's up guys, welcome to Vintage Genetics. It is Sunday today and I just worked out. I did uh, some chest and shoulders and some cardio and I'm pretty tired to be honest so I'm having my post-workout meal. You know it's in the Actifry actually. That'll be done in about 10 minutes. What I put in there is just two blocks of uh, white fish, you know. Uh, of 100 grams each, then 200 grams of cooked brown rice and this time I put a different kind of vegetable in there and I'll actually have to look up the name of it but uh, I tried it before and it's pretty good low calorie, healthy for you, vitamins, minerals and the works and I put 10 grams of coconut oil and uh, at the end because you don't want to heat it up I add 10 grams of extra virgin olive oil but you know I normally don't do this, but I might take a nap actually. Um, a lot of bodybuilders, especially the pro bodybuilders who can afford it, take a nap after working out. Like um, some that even work out twice a day. So in the morning they would do back, take a nap in the afternoon, then in the evening do biceps. That would be the perfect scenario, of course. But hey, our lives are not the perfect scenario for bodybuilding. But in a weekend, however, you can work out in the morning and take a nap for recovery in the afternoon. But personally, I find it very hard to take a nap, no matter what I did, no matter how tired I feel, because the moment I lay down there in bed, I just cannot fall asleep because it is still noon, you know? It's still light outside. And, uh, you know, it's always been difficult for me to sleep, to take a nap. You know, they say, oh, take a power nap and you're tired 10, 15 minutes and you'll feel refreshed. It, it's not possible for me. It takes me like an hour there to fall asleep. So, anyway, let's eat the post-workout meal. Right, I'm about to have my post-workout meal. Let's see what it is. So, look at that. What we have right here is what I mentioned, 200 grams. Well, it's actually... A little bit of basmati rice in there too because it was still left over so I just included it but most of it is still brown rice which I always prefer there's 200 grams of fish in there and I just poured over 10 grams of olive oil 10 grams of coconut oil was already in there and this is actually um, similar to white asparagus now the green one is better but the only difference between the two is white asparagus grew underground and the green ones touched the sun basically the sun got in touch with the asparagus turning it green you know and as a dessert which I consider a dessert five slices of pineapple has a lot of vitamin C especially very good post-workout you know antioxidants taking care of the damage caused in your muscles repairing yourself recovering you know I consider this a dessert it's nice and sweet because there's nothing sweet in my diet right now you know just the rice and stuff so this is a nice dessert it's healthy it's kind of low calorie as well it has bromelain in it to digest the protein in this meal a little better and yes uh, it's kind of a big meal right so I'm gonna enjoy it right now Hey, what's up guys? I'm in the kitchen right now preparing my third meal of the day, so the meal after the post-workout. And actually, I didn't end up taking a nap. I felt pretty rejuvenated after the post-workout meal, as I usually do. So anyway, well, I do recommend taking a nap, but let's take a look at my next meal. So, the first thing what we have right here is a tuna salad basically so this is about 150 grams of uh, canned tuna with about 10 grams of olive oil and some uh, oh, uh, and some onions and garlic and a little salt and pepper and then what we have here is about a hundred grams of broccoli as you can see here on a very slow heat this was frozen beforehand so um, I have the Actifry on for about 30 minutes, so if you put this on low heat for 30 minutes, it is done automatically. And I put some Cajun spices on this to make it delicious. And what we have right here, the Actifry with 5 minutes to go. Let's see what's inside. 
Ooh, what we have here is some potatoes. But that's white potatoes, Wes. Isn't that bad? It's like white rice. It's like white pasta. Isn't that a bad thing? I'm colors is enough. Actually, no, it isn't a bad thing. The color of the potatoes happen to be white. And the comparison between white potatoes and sweet potatoes, sweet potatoes don't automatically mean better potatoes. It's a different, it's actually called a yam, not even an actual potato it is. So, but what is true is that if you leave the skin on the potato, that you have more nutrients. For example, more iron, more fibers, more vitamin Bs, stuff like that. But the potato itself, actually, when you compare it to brown rice, first of all, per 100 grams of prepared product, so 100 grams of uh, potatoes versus 100 grams of brown rice, the difference is less carbs for the potatoes, more iron, a lot more uh, minerals and vitamins, actually. Um, but probably the brown rice has a little more fiber in it, but that's why adding vegetables to your potato meal will alleviate that problem. Now, as long as you get enough fibers throughout the day, you're fine. And potatoes are actually a starch, so they actually do not, opposed to what many people think, raise the insulin level as high as you think. The insulin response isn't high at all compared to brown rice. But what I do today, and actually have been doing for a couple of days, is start out with a meal, oatmeal, which I'm gonna replace later on, but I'm gonna show you that exactly how I do that. Then a rice meal, then a potato meal, a rice meal, potato meal, and then some nuts. That's it for the day. And then of course the post-workout shake is in there somewhere as well. But that's what I do right now to, first of all, get different sources of food in and secondly the benefit of taking potatoes is more vi you know it's a different uh, composition of uh, nutrients you get in your body if you take the same every single day you would get used to it and eventually miss out on something if you take in different kinds of foods not too many foods of course you don't want to have a meal with beans, uh, rice, uh, seeds, nuts, and all that stuff in one meal, you, j you simply won't be able to absorb all of it. But what I do recommend is taking the basics and picking a few of those and making sure that you ingest those a couple times a day. So I've got oats, I've got brown rice, I've got potatoes, you know, I've got white fish, I've got tuna, olive oil, coconut oil, you know, it's not a lot of variation, but it's important to have some variation. But you gotta know whether it works for you. You know, you gotta know whether it works for your metabolism. That is basically, that is basically the important part, as well as not having a bloated stomach when you eat the food. Now, some people don't react well to oatmeal at all, I do. I don't get a bloated stomach at all. I can work out an hour after eating oatmeal, no problem. Same for potatoes, same for brown rice. Now some people say, especially in the comments sometimes in the videos, if they eat brown rice they get a bloated stomach. And bloated stomach means that you won't be able to absorb the nutrients, the protein and everything else as well as when you wouldn't have a bloated stomach. So make sure to eat foods that don't stress your digestive tract. That is the most important thing to me, especially when cutting, especially on a pre-contest diet. All right, that's the alarm that this thing is done. Oh, let me see. Sounds pretty good, huh? Sounds pretty good. But I'm gonna have it go for two more minutes for that extra quick. But I have it go for two more minutes for that extra crisp. All right, let's take a look. All right. All right, let's take a look at the complete meal. Look at this. Three colors on the plate. Doesn't look too bad, does it? So we have 300 grams of 
white potatoes, which is the same value as 200 grams of cooked white rice. So you get more bang for your book. 100 grams of broccoli and 150 grams of tuna with some onion and garlic and 10 grams of olive oil. To me, this is a very nice, clean, tasty, healthy meal. Thumbs up, approved. Let's enjoy. All right, I'm downstairs in the kitchen again and I'm out of rice. And the only rice I have right now is white rice, but because I add vegetables in the meal, I can get away with it. You know, you do have to add vegetables, um, you know, broccoli or anything else that has some fiber in it. Uh, at least get some fibers in your dietary needs, you know, you need fibers to pull toxins from your body and to basically let your digestive tract work properly. Anyway, so, so I'm heating up the pan right here and I've got four of these bags of rice. They're actually Uncle Ben's and the neat thing about this is that this rice stays loose. No stickiness at all. So 10 minutes, once this starts cooking, I put these in for 10 minutes and they are perfecto. There's also a brown rice version of this, but I still have this one laying around, the only one actually, so tomorrow I need to do some groceries. And yeah, 10 minutes of this, and then meanwhile, in here, in the Actifry, I can turn this one on, put uh, you know uh, my vegetables and my fish in here, put it on for 10 minutes, this is done in 10 minutes, mix it together, and boom, we've got a meal really effortless for a bodybuilder and that is important when i'm waiting for the water to boil time to water the plants so oh, someone's got to do it right we've got a lot of plants in here look at that i don't know if you can see but it shows shiver off in pretty good way hey isn't it so what i usually do is uh, you know uh, the bags are done I put it in a container like this, leave it out until you know the steam is pretty much gone. And it's perfect rice guys, loose, as you can see, perfect. When you take it out, as you can see, nice and loose, perfect range of rice. And there's also a brown rice variation, the brand is Uncle Ben's. Now, of course it's a little more expensive, but to me, it's just worth it, high quality rice enjoyment of every meal so this is the act to fry uh, you know as you can see i've put the fish and the broccoli in here it usually takes about 10 minutes before you know you see the, the the water there i want that to basically evaporate and then this is done and what i do then is add 200 grams of this cooked rice to a plate put it in a microwave for a minute warm it up combine it with this put 10 uh, grams of olive oil and it's done Easy, cheap, nice, healthy, delicious, perfect. All right, so this is the result. We've got the rice on the bottom and the fish and the broccoli on top with the olive oil mixed through. And of course, we also got the pineapple. And also important, just to drink enough water. Now I drink, uh, this is a shaker, cup, and it uh, holds about 800 to 900 milliliters when filled to the top. And I drink one of these pretty much every meal, so that's five of these a day for now. But also during the workout, I drink two of these, and in between meals, I might drink a half of these. So, you know, that's quite a lot of water. Water is important for bodybuilding, guys. Even if we're losing fat, for losing water, for balancing your body, Water is important. All right, it's the next day now. Killed the legs yesterday. And, you know, I was thinking of something. I actually went to the physiotherapist uh, a couple of days ago because, you know, I wanted to make sure with the competition about my shoulder that, you know, nothing was wrong with it because I did feel some kind of pain in there. I'm not sure where it came from, but when you bench press, sometimes you have like an impingement in your shoulder. You know, on either side, on the front delt, basically. And when you make certain movements, 
you feel that pain, you know, a stinging pain in there, especially when you go too heavy on the bench press or when you flare your arms out like this instead of this, it can happen. Now he showed me a very good exercise to perform in order to alleviate yourself from that shoulder injury. Now keep in mind that apart from doing this exercise, you still have to perform good form on every exercise, on the bench press, on the flies, the double pullover, every exercise that involves front delts, make sure that you perform it with proper form, full range of motion, and not a weight that it is too heavy for you. Now, especially guys who try to do three, two, one rep maxes, they are the ones who mess up their shoulders. Anyway, let's show you the exercise. All right, so basically what you do is you lay on the side of the shoulder that hurts. So for me, it would be the right one. Then you lay on your side like this. I gotta put the camera lower a little bit for this. All right, so lay on the side of your body of the shoulder that hurts. So when your right shoulder hurts, go lie down on your right side like this. All right, you can do it on the floor, which is actually better. But I'm doing it on the bed right now because I don't feel like I'm lying on the floor. Anyway, put your arm like this straight on the floor on the ground and then what you got to do is put this shoulder over this one so first of all this and then you grab your arm and make sure to pull down your arm all the way down keeping this shoulder over the shoulder that hurts right you want to be in that position so then basically you put it all the way down and you twist it down and flexible guy flexible person you know, a regular person, usually with not too much muscle, is able to put their arm down like this easily. Now let me show you a little better. So, a more flexible guy would be able to put his arm down like this in that position I just showed you. A bodybuilder, and especially when your shoulder is impinged, has more difficulty doing that. And I noticed that a lot uh, during my visit to the physiotherapist, you know, it was very painful, but by doing an exercise 15 times a day. So basically in the morning five times, in the afternoon five times for one minute and uh, before training, if you do chest five times or before bed. But let me show you how it is really done. So put your arm like this, put this shoulder over this shoulder on your side and put your arm all the way down, flat like that. If you're able to do that, well, that's good. That means you're flexible and that means your shoulder will heal just fine. Now, if you're doing this and it hurts around here, that means it's too tight around here. The tendon is too tight, it's inflamed and needs to loosen up. So basically what you're doing right here in this movement, you're stretching that tendon out, that muscle that is inflamed right there. So put it down all the way, keep it like this for a minute. And what you notice is you literally squeeze out the moisture in that area. So when you go up again, it kind of hurts, you know? So what you do is you do a couple of these and you put, pump the moisture back in and boom, the pain is gone, guys. Pain is gone. And trust me, if you do this right before bench press, to which you're usually limited in doing this, that exercise by the pain, you will now be able to do your previous weight. You will still feel it, but you will be restricted by it. Of course, the pain will remain for a couple of weeks, but you will be able to do every exercise you normally do. And the pain will subside every single day. Anyway, guys, I hope that was a little bit useful. For me, it very much was. You know, uh, some people walk, walk around with this pain for months, years even. So do something like this actively you know don't be lazy just do it it's your body it's your progress and get on with it all right guys that was it for today showed you some meals showed you some tips on what i do some changes i made shoulder exercise and stuff like that i'll show you a lot more and the next video will most likely be the cutting video in which i explain how to cut the old school slash the best way in my opinion 
what has worked for me. Of course, there are a lot of different ways to cut, but this way it will surely work. Anyway, guys, thank you for watching and don't forget to stay golden. Whoa, damn. Look at that. Look at that. <laughs>